there's a few names that people use to describe our rock in the solar system. Earth, home, the blue planet. But why do we perceive Earth so strongly as the blue planet? Yes, the water looks overwhelmingly blue and vast from certain angles in space, but water has been found on other planets. It's not exclusive to Earth. In fact, it's this presence of water on another planet which makes the hunt for extraterrestrial life viable and feasibly possible for it to exist. So when we look at Earth as an ecosystem, is the most important colour blue, or is it not in fact green? It's the miracle of evolved and efficient photosynthetic life on planet Earth that makes life in the atmosphere feasibly possible. And when we look at photosynthetic life, it's important to identify what is done in our past, our present, our future, and how we can use these organisms to their fullest capabilities. We can categorize photosynthesis and the organisms into two distinct groups, terrestrial, our trees, our bushes, our plants, and aquatic and freshwater, our macro and micro algaes. Micro being single-celled photosynthetic life and macro being our seaweeds that we see washed upon the seashore and in our rock pools. And we learn a lot about trees in school as part of our curriculum, but what we don't discuss, which is a real shame, are the algaes. And we see them in our everyday lives. Take a breath and release and take another and release. One of those breaths, the oxygen you've just used, was provided by algae. And we see it dominating our coastal regions. So when we examine the coasts of our cities and rural areas, we see massive amounts of productive algal life evident just off our coasts. And we see this from images from NASA. But more than that, we see the evolution potential of algae in nutrient desolate areas such as the middle of our oceans. Even these most nutrient deprived areas are home to productive algal life. How is this possible? The algae have become so adapted they can utilize the dust from the Sahara Desert and the, the micronutrients associated to photosynthesize and lock carbon dioxide in their systems. But more important than terrestrial life, algae can lock this carbon dioxide in the deep ocean. We can't utilize the algae in the middle of the oceans like we can cut down trees when they photosynthesize. In fact, the first photosynthetic life on planet Earth was a group of organisms called cyanobacteria, the evolutionary pinpoint of photosynthesis as we know it today. These prokaryotic life forms, another word for bacteria, were engulfed by a more complex organism called a eukaryote, and eukaryotes are life as we know it with animals and humans and plants and trees, rather than E. coli, such as bacteria. And they formed what's known as an endosymbiotic relationship, a mutually beneficial agreement, where the cyanobacteria lived inside these eukaryotic life forms, and over evolution became algae as we know it today. But more than just breathe, what else do we do? Well, we all eat. And when we look at the role that algae plays in our oceanic ecosystems, we can see from the National Geographic a simple food pyramid. And algae underpins as a food source the vast majority of the ocean. But when you compare that to terrestrial land, we all eat the vegetables, the primary producers on land, but we don't eat the algae of the ocean. And that's a real shame because algae are incredibly good for us. They've got high protein content, good nutrients, good minerals, but also antioxidants such as astaxanthin, to put that into real world perspectives, that's about 6,000 times more powerful than vitamin C on a molecular basis. So why aren't we eating algae? It's a real shame because when we compare it to terrestrial land, we eat the vegetables, the primary producers of land, but we don't eat the primary producers of the ocean, yet we eat the tunas, the fishes, the lobsters, but we don't eat the base product where all these beautiful organisms originate. So why don't people eat algae? Well, there's two main reasons. The first being perception. People see the smelly, washed-up weed on the seashore. The second being ignorance. People don't realize the health capacities you can get from eating algae. So how do we change people's perspectives? For those who don't want to eat algae as a raw food, we can incorporate it into our diets as a healthy salt alternative, or maybe encapsulate it as a subsidy. But it's important to highlight that we do eat algae already. It's present in sushi. It's what wraps your rice up, a form called nori. So other than eating and breathing, what else can algae do for us? Well, the limitations, quite frankly, are yet to be perceived. We have applications as cosmetics, pharmaceuticals, a plastic replacement, fertilizer on crops and biofuel. But what we need to do is we need to look at cross-compatible, multi-applicable solutions with algae. And when we take agriculture as an example, yes, we can use this raw algal biomass as a crop fertilizer, 
But additionally, we need to look at implementing it into cows. And what we find is that putting certain species in a cow's diet can reduce methane production by 98%. And as some of you will know, methane is incredibly more damaging to the environment on a case-by-case -case basis than carbon dioxide. At Newcastle University, we've been looking at incorporating algae into the wastewater sector. And what we see in the wastewater sector is there's two main issue components. The wastewater, after the plant has removed the fertilizer for agriculture, and the carbon dioxide produced as a result of the energy demand for removing the fertilizer. When we apply algae to this system, we see that the algae can clean the wastewater further, releasing clean H2O into the environment and not damaging the local ecosystems. Furthermore, the carbon dioxide becomes oxygen for us to breathe. And a byproduct of all of this is the raw algae, which we previously highlighted, can be used in a multitude of factors. So when we look at the next steps with algae in our modern society, the first thing we need to do is change people's perceptions and get them talking about these amazing photosynthetic organisms. And there's two main routes we can do this. We can categorize people into those who are still in education and those who aren't. And for those who are still in education, it's quite simple. At the moment, we learn about the big things, the blue whales, the sharks, but it's important to highlight that even the largest creature to ever live, the blue whale, is only two food chain steps away from the algae. The blue whale eats the krill, the krill eats the phytoplankton. Phytoplankton's another word for algae. So what we need to do here is incorporate algae into the curriculum and change people's perceptions from the onset. But those in education don't constitute the majority of the population. And other than going out onto the streets to engage with people on a personal case-by-case -case basis, it's difficult to change people's perceptions. We can go out and do street science, but it's time personnel consuming, which, which results in economic factors which are unviable. So we have to come up with novel solutions as to engage with people. And one thing that's never ever been done before is hearing. And how do you hear seaweed? Well, it's a plant, it doesn't speak, it doesn't move for the most part. So we had to come up with this never before seen idea of, of how to get people to engage with seaweed. So we got in contact with this local music producer called Rykob and came up with this the idea of turning DNA from the species we use at Newcastle University into electronic music. We developed an algorithm which codes the DNA ATCG raw code into C major. And he came on board and together we collaborated and produced this track, this this euphoric progressive house techno music produced from algal DNA as an attempt to engage with people on a more personal basis, but also something which people will be able to do in their spare time. They're not going to be pestered by street scientists trying to tell you about seaweed in the middle of your shopping. So when we look at the amazing benefits and potentials associated with algae, now is the time to be changing people's perception whether that be a change coming from the ground up by implementation into the educational system alongside simple processes of biology and food web, or whether that be through novel solutions such as turning DNA into electronic music to engage with people on a time which is more suitable to them. Now is the time to be consuming algae, reaping the rewards of its health benefits and acknowledging the role that it plays in our ecosystem. On our planet, one color reigns supreme as the fundamental driving force between providing the nutrients that we rely so strongly upon on a daily basis. Today I challenge you not to imagine the Earth as a blue planet, but to imagine it as green. Thank you.